Dear friends, the word of God is like hidden treasures. The more you search, the more you find. In this presentation, you will discover the Sabbath treasure of the Bible. I trust you will make this treasure your own. Francois will now open the Bible treasure chest for us. Just look at this awe-inspiring view. It's a section of the Grand Canyon. The Bible tells us that the one who made it all is God. But besides being the creator, he is also the recreator, the redeemer. And one of these days when he comes to take us home, he'll also be the restorer. Listen to God's claim as creator in Amos chapter 4 verse 13. He who forms the mountains, creates the wind, and reveals his thoughts to man, he who turns dawn to darkness and treads the high places of the earth. The Lord God Almighty is his name. Remember, whenever you see mountains, God speaks to you and says, I made them. He wants us to see him as the kind giver of all the beautiful things in life. And in order for us to remember that he is the kind, unselfish, loving creator who cares for us, he gave us a special memorial. Exodus chapter 20 verses 8 to 10 Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son, nor your daughter, or manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your animals, or the alien within your gates. What a kind, considerate creator. He tells his creatures to cease labor on the seventh day. But not only the boss, he also wants every employee to enjoy a 24-hour break. The Sabbath command extends God's kindness even to animals. The Sabbath command reveals to you and me the kind of creator we serve. But why must the Sabbath be kept every seventh day of the week? Because the Sabbath is designed to remind us continually of our Creator. Let's read verse 11. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. There are so many things that distract our thoughts during the week and for this very reason God instituted the Sabbath in order for us to enjoy sweet, undisturbed fellowship with Him. And now for a very important question. How long did it take the Creator to make heavens, earth and sea? Six days, the Bible says. Whenever you have a numerical adjective like first or third before the word yom, day, it refers to a 24-hour day. According to biblical chronology, our planet is about 6,000 years old and rapidly deteriorating. We call this the second law of thermodynamics, which means everything degenerates from order to disorder. Isaiah 51 verse 6, Lift up your eyes to the heavens. Look at the earth beneath. The heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment. By keeping the Sabbath, I acknowledge God as the one who created this world in six literal days. The correct observance is designed by God to develop a special relationship with Him. Let us remember the Sabbath in a special, worshipful manner. But someone does not like our Creator. Actually, he made war with him in heaven. He lost the battle and was cast to the earth. And then he invented the theory of evolution to dethrone God as the Creator. When I looked at these dinosaur tracks, they reminded me of a worldwide flood that occurred about 2,000 years after creation, as recorded in Genesis. In my mind's eye, I can see how these poor creatures fled to higher ground in order to escape the rising waters. As they fled, they left these tracks behind in the soft mud and eventually it fossilized. 
No, says another school of thought. It did not happen that way. There was no personal creator and there was no universal flood. The book of Genesis is a myth. I read these astronomical figures concerning the time when animals roamed the planet. By the way, you are allowed to subtract or add a few million years either way. But these suggested dates do not correspond with the biblical account. When I studied these fossils in Namibia, I thanked God for the message of the Sabbath which tells me that my roots come from a personal creator. The Sabbath gives me identity. I did not originate from a theory or a series of mutations or from chance. I came from the hand of the creator. What is the sign of God's creatorship? The seventh day Sabbath. Let us never forget it. And the building material he used in the construction of the Sabbath is called time. And time is indestructible. As long as time shall last, the Sabbath will last. Let us look at the second beautiful symbol of the Sabbath. Every gift from God is a gift of love. But the greatest gift ever given to man was the gift of Jesus who died for our sins. Nowhere in the Bible is the love of God the Father so beautifully explained and revealed as at Calvary. And our only hope of gaining eternal life is by accepting God's free gift of salvation. The Sabbath is a perpetual sign reminding me that my salvation was accomplished at Calvary. Let's read it. Exodus chapter 31 verse 13 Say to the Israelites, You must observe my Sabbaths. This will be a sign between me and you for the generations to come, so that you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. My dear fellow sinner, maybe you have at times given up all hope of being saved in God's kingdom. I have. But let's not despair. The message of the Sabbath is exciting. It guarantees us weekly that God will take care of our salvation. Leviticus 23 verse 32 From even unto even shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. When the sun sets on a Friday afternoon, you can start rejoicing in the good news of salvation by grace until Saturday evening at sunset. Why must we celebrate our salvation on the Sabbath? Because during the week, the devil may tell you that you are totally lost. We need a weekly reminder that we serve a saving, forgiving God. By the way, the Bible teaches that every new day begins at sunset and ends at sunset the following day. Genesis chapter 1 verse 5 is a typical example. And the evening and the morning were the first day. I prefer God's way of beginning the Sabbath to man's way of beginning the man-made Sabbath the Sunday. I'll tell you why. At midnight I'm usually asleep and unaware that a new day has begun. Mark chapter 1 verse 32 At even when the sun did set. Mark says the Sabbath ends at sunset on a Saturday afternoon. Have you ever given thought as to why the Sabbath begins and ends at sunset? Some time ago when I visited this beautiful lake of Malawi, I thought of God's perfect timing of the Sabbath. It's usually at sunset when God paints the most beautiful cloud pictures on the canvas of the sky, and at times there falls a hush over nature. I invite you to keep the Sabbath as the Bible tells you to do it. Meditate on His kindness as you watch the sun go down. And thank and praise Him for being such a loving God. But above all, thank Him for giving Jesus to do for you what you could not do for yourself on Calvary. Beyond our Milky Way with its billions of huge suns, there are millions upon millions of other galaxies. This specific one is called Andromeda. When Jesus comes, we will have the privilege of exploring His mighty universe. But on the Sabbath, we will all meet together to worship the Creator who came and died for us on Calvary. Isaiah 66 verse 22 
As the new heavens and the new earth that I make will endure before me, declares the Lord, so will your name and descendants endure. Verse 23, From one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all mankind will come and bow down before me. 1 John chapter 4 verse 8 says that God is love. And this is going to be the theme of our study throughout eternity. The more we appreciate eternal life and the perfect conditions of heaven, the more we will appreciate His deep divine love for us. But let me tell you something else. The devil does not want you to enjoy the blessings of true Sabbath observance. And in order to rob people of enjoying the Sabbath from sunset to sunset, he has given man a substitute day of rest. Let's spend a few minutes looking at the reasons many sincere people give for observing the first day of the week as a day of rest. There are only eight verses in the New Testament that mention the first day of the week. Let's examine them carefully and see whether they tell us to keep the first day of the week. Listen to the testimony of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 1. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There is nothing in this verse telling me to change from Sabbath to Sunday. Mark is the next Bible writer who mentions the first day of the week. Mark 16, verses 1 and 2. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. I don't find any change here, do you? Verse 9. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. Nothing here. And now for the testimony of Luke, the doctor, chapter 24, verse 1. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. The doctor does not mention any change. What would be the testimony of John? He died when he was almost a hundred years old. John chapter 20 verse 1 Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed. Verse 19 On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They did not celebrate the resurrection. They were hiding for fear of the Jews. Let us listen to the testimony of Acts, chapter 20, verse 7. On the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people and, because he intended to leave the next day, kept on talking until midnight. The reason why Paul had this meeting on the Saturday evening was because, the verse says, he was leaving the following day. A last witness on this matter of the first day of the week comes from Paul. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verses 1 and 2 Now about the collection for God's people. Do what I told the Galatian churches to do. On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with his income, saving it up, so that when I come no collection will have to be made. The Weymouth translation says, Let each of you put on one side and store up at his home. Paul was collecting for the poor in Jerusalem, and they had to work out their budget on a Sunday as to how much they could contribute. The Sabbath was too sacred for such work. It is so sad that well-meaning people try to build Sunday sacredness on these eight verses. None of them tell us to worship God on Sunday instead of Sabbath. Could God change his own law? If the matter is yes, then we concede that the Sabbath could be changed. But if the Bible says no, then it's no. Malachi 3.6 I, the Lord, do not change. James 1.17 
the Father of the heavenly light, who does not change like shifting shadows. Deuteronomy 4.13 He declared to you his covenant, the ten commandments which he commanded you to follow and then wrote them on two stone tablets. By the way, commandments and covenant are synonymous. Can they be changed? Psalms 89 verse 34 I will not violate my covenant or alter what my lips have uttered. God says he cannot change his law. God wants you to make an appointment with him this coming Sabbath. He did not change it to another day. The original blessings are still intact. Deuteronomy 7 verse 9 Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. Ecclesiastes 3.14 I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it, so men will revere him. Hebrews 13.8 Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Exodus 31 verse 18 says that the law was written with the finger of God. You know, it's quite a serious matter when you think about it. God wrote the Sabbath commandment with his own finger. This is the only portion of scripture that was not written by the hand of a man. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 says, I am the Lord, I change not. Do you realize the importance of this statement? Did Jesus indicate any change in the Sabbath? There are voices going up saying Jesus changed the Sabbath. Let's ask him to enlighten us on this issue. Matthew 5.17 Do not think that I've come to abolish the law or the prophets. I've not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Did Jesus obey his Father's commandments? John 15 verse 10 If you obey my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. We've examined the question, did Jesus change the law and the Sabbath? And the answer is no. Exodus 20 verse 10 The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. This is a definite article, the, not an indefinite article. God is very meticulously specific. Luke 4.16 He came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Some people admit that Jesus kept the Sabbath while he was on earth, but they say his death exempts us from the obligation of keeping the Sabbath. But did the event of the cross of Calvary change the Sabbath? What do you think? Let's ask the Bible to tell us. Luke 23 verse 54 It was preparation day and the Sabbath was about to begin. On what day was Christ crucified? Friday. What happened to the woman who followed Jesus after he died on the cross? Verse 56 says, They went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. Nothing was changed after Christ's death. Luke wrote this gospel in AD 63. At that time the Sabbath was still God's holy day. Luke 24 verse 1, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. It is so very easy to identify the true Sabbath in the Bible. It is the day after Friday, or the day of preparation, as the Bible calls it, and the day before the first day of the week, or Sunday. The same Jesus who instituted the Sabbath in Eden also kept it while on earth. And now, after his death, he still tells us to keep it holy. Referring to the future destruction of Jerusalem, Jesus said to his disciples in Matthew 24 verse 20, 
Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath. Are there ministers of religion, both Catholics and Protestants, who admit that Saturday is still the Sabbath? Yes, there are. Cardinal Gibbons declared, You may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and you will not find a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. The scriptures enforce the religious observance of Saturday. This comes from a Catholic source, The Faith of Our Fathers, page 89. The Catholic Press carried this article. It says, Sunday is a Catholic institution and its claims to observance can be defended only by Catholic principles. From the beginning to the end of Scripture, there is not a single passage that warrants the transfer of weekly public worship from the last day of the week to the first. The Catholic Church, by its own infallible authority, created Sunday a holy day to take the place of the Sabbath of the Old Law. What an accurate fulfillment of the prophecy of Daniel 7 verse 25, where the prophet predicted that the little horn would change God's law. You know, if I teach people that Christ changed the Sabbath, I blame him for a crime committed by the Antichrist, the little horn. There are many Protestant scholars who admit that there is no scriptural basis for Sunday observance. Listen to this one. The notion of a formal substitution of the first day for the seventh day and the transference to it, perhaps in a spiritualized form, of the sabbatical obligation established by the fourth commandment has no basis whatever, either in Holy Scripture or in Christian antiquity. This comes from the Dictionary of Christian Antiquities, the article Sabbath by Smith and Cheatham. Dr. R. W. Dale is a Congregationalist, says in The Ten Commandments, page 100 and 101, it is quite clear that however rigidly or devoutly we spend a Sunday, we are not keeping the Sabbath. The Sabbath was founded on a specific divine command. We can plead no such command for the obligation to observe Sunday. There is not a single sentence in the New Testament to suggest that we incur any penalty by violating the supposed sanctity of Sunday. When I researched this matter of a day of worship, I was shocked at the many statements made by prominent church leaders. So many of them admit that Saturday is the Sabbath, but for convenience sake they keep Sunday sacred. You know, all of us are so human. We admit that certain things we do are wrong, but we make excuses for doing them. We rationalize. May God help us to live what we believe, to practice what we preach. A Methodist minister admits, There is not on record any divine command issued to the apostles to change the Sabbath from the day on which it was held by the Jews to the first day of the week. This comes from Watson's Theological Institutes, volume 2, page 511. Augustus Neander, celebrated historian, writes, The festival of Sunday, like all other festivals, was always a human ordinance, and it was far from the intention of the apostles to establish a divine command in this respect, far from them and far from the early apostolic church, to transfer the laws of the Sabbath to Sunday. This comes from the history of the Christian religion and church. Rose's translation, page 186. When I know what is right and neglect doing it, I'm committing a very serious crime. But when I teach other people to transgress God's commandments, heaven views this crime in a very serious light. Matthew 5.19 Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Dr. Edward F. Hiscox, author of the Baptist Manual, writes, There was 
and is a command to keep holy the Sabbath day. But that Sabbath day was not Sunday. It will be said, however, and with some show of triumph, that the Sabbath was transferred from the seventh to the first day of the week. Where can the record of such a transaction be found? Not in the New Testament. Absolutely not. This was published in a paper read before the New York Ministers' Conference held November 13, 1893. Samia Bakihoki was the first Protestant scholar to be allowed to do doctoral research in the famous Pontifical Gregorian University in Rome. I read this fine scholarly thesis on the rise of Sunday observance in the early Christianity. It's a masterpiece. This book has the official approval of the Catholic Church. Acts chapter 20 verses 29 and 30 I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. Long before the apostate church distorted the Sabbath truth of the Bible, Paul predicted it. Let's read another verse from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 3 and 4. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. The man doomed to destruction. He opposes and exalts himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped and even sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Both Paul and Daniel saw what the papacy would do to the law of God. Tell me, in the light of what we have studied, do you think God is serious about us keeping holy his Sabbath? Of course he is. And because the Sabbath is the only commandment that identifies God as the Creator, Redeemer and Recreator, the devil is challenging God on this very issue. For many years, millions of people were ignorant concerning the Sabbath Sunday issue. But in these serious times in which we live, more people are exposed to the facts. And more and more people are beginning to enjoy the blessings of Sabbath observance. The prophet Isaiah prophesied about the restoration of the beautiful Sabbath truth prior to the second coming of Jesus. Let's read it. Isaiah 58 verses 12 and 13 You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, and if you honor it by not going your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words, Verse 14, Then you will find your joy in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father Jacob. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. I am interested to ride with the saints on high and feast on the inheritance that God has prepared for his obedient children. What about you? The Sanhedrin forbade the early apostles to preach the gospel. Listen to their heroic reply, Acts 5 verse 29. We must obey God rather than men. Will I obey God or will I obey man? In our future lectures on the seal of God and the mark of the beast, we are going to look at the last great crisis just before Jesus comes. The choice will be between a man-made day and a God-made Sabbath. Only people who have made an unconditional commitment to Jesus will be able to make the right choice. I invite you to start enjoying the blessings of Sabbath observance this coming Friday evening when the sun sets. Get your family together, either in your home or somewhere in nature. You may even have to do it all by yourself, but I can assure you that the God of the Sabbath will honour you with a special outpouring of his rich blessings. 
Thank you, Francois. It is a wonderful thought knowing that you are doing the right thing. God is pleased by his children obeying him and living according to his instruction. He wants us to obey him on the Sabbath command. Won't you make this decision to enter into this special relationship by honoring his Sabbath? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the special time of the Sabbath that you have set apart, a time of rest in which you wish to communicate with your children. We want to obey you. Help us to realize you are a holy God and that the Sabbath is holy time. In Jesus' name, Amen.